Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace for a discussion of issues surrounding the parliamentary elections in Egypt coming on November 29th. Uh, my name is Michelle Dunn. I'm a senior associate in the Middle East program here at Carnegie. And today is the first in a five-part series of programs on Egypt that Carnegie is going to do in association with the Project on Middle East Democracy, POMED, over the next nine months or so. We want to thank the Open Society Institute for its generous support for this program, in which we're going to bring a series of uh, Egyptian visitors to Washington to share with us their insights into the um, political, social, and human rights situation in Egypt as it approaches an important leadership transition. There's a lot going on uh, in Egypt right now uh, in the weeks leading up to these elections for the People's Assembly. There are um, challenges to freedom of expression are arising as particularly important issues with the, for example, the, the dismissal of Ibrahim Isa, the editor of a Dastur newspaper. That's only the most recent manifestation, but there have been a lot of issues in Egypt re recently related to restrictions on freedom of expression. Also, just in the last few uh, days, we've seen the detention of dozens of members of the Muslim Brotherhood following that organization's uh, announcement of fairly large-scale participation in the, in the parliamentary elections. Um, and um, as you follow these Egypt issues, we hope you will refer to Carnegie's website. We've put up a website on the uh, Egyptian elections. Uh, it's it's egyptelections.carnegieendowment.org. Uh, we, we'll, we're, we have a lot of background information there about the Egyptian political system, and we're posting new content, uh, new articles and interviews and so forth all the time. So we hope you'll be uh, checking the site frequently for new content. Now, today in our discussion, we're going to focus on two issues. We're going to focus on opposition participation in the parliamentary elections, including the debate um, that is taking place between opposition groups and even inside opposition groups about whether to run in the elections or whether to boycott. And we'll also discuss the, the situation and the constraints that face opposition groups that have decided to participate and to run in the elections. The second issue we're going to discuss is monitoring of the elections by Egyptian civil society organizations. Who is organizing monitors? What will the monitors be able to do? What concerns do they have in the run-up to the elections? How is the electoral system that they're going to monitor be different from the system used in the last parliamentary elections in 2005? Um, I'm delighted to say that we have for you today two outstanding speakers from Egypt who I think are uniquely qualified to address these issues. Um, at the center of our table is Mahmoud Ali. He's the executive director of the Egyptian Association for Supporting Democratic Development, which is one of the most experienced and well-known NGOs in Egypt that focuses on election monitoring and will be monitoring the upcoming elections. He is also uh, a member of the Weft Party Supreme Council. Uh, to my right, is, um, is Mahmoud Shihawi, who will be helping out with uh, interpretation for, uh, for Mr. Ali. And, uh, and we thank uh, the National Democratic Institute for making him available to help us out today. And then at the end of the table is Wa'al Nawara, uh, who is Secretary General and co-founder of the Red Party, the Tomorrow Party. He's a prominent liberal politician in Egypt and also a businessman. And I'm joined uh, by Andrew Albertson, who's the executive director of POMED. He spent a lot of time in Egypt recently following the political situation, and he's going to af uh, offer his comments after the two speakers. So we're going to begin with brief remarks by Wa'al and Mahmoud, then comments by Andrew, and then we're going to open up for your questions. Uh, Wa'al, I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Michelle, for that. Um, 
Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm really glad uh, we're here with you to, uh, I think uh, uh, this program is uh, very promising because the um, American, Washington was, was uh, monopolized like Egypt also by the NDP. So this is the first time I think we have an opportunity, uh, Egyptian opposition have an opportunity to address uh, American uh, uh, audience. The, I would, I know that Michel warned me that the audience is very informed and uh, we don't need to talk a lot about the uh, political context, uh, but uh, just very quickly, um, we are still having the same regime which uh, was erected in 1952 following the uh, coup d'etat, and uh, although they have changed the labels, many labels from ASU, Arab Socialist Union, to um, Egypt uh, Socialist Party, the NDP is no more, but it's just a grandson of uh, these uh, institutions, single party dictatorship. Uh, changed ideology from socialism and uh, Nasserism in the 60s to infidah or uh, open door policy in the 80s to whatever the name is now, we don't really know, but uh, it's uh, more or less the same um, people, the same mechanisms, even with, when you change the father comes a son, so it's more or less the same um, scenario. The political process is scripted play. When I say play here, I mean like things like the opera, the theater. So there is a script, and uh, the process is designed so that it brings at the end uh, the designed outcome. So you have a process, but unlike political process in other places or most places, the process itself brings its outcomes. In this case, the outcome is scripted first, and then the process is designed to bring this outcome. The regime wants to choose both the government and the opposition. So if they don't like Ayman Noor, they bring somebody like Musa Mustafa Musa to, bring, to become the president of the party. If they don't like Ibrahim Isa, they send somebody like Saad al-Badawi to go and buy a store and then fire Ibrahim Isa and bring somebody else who is, uh, uh, whose writing are uh, deemed acceptable. Um, you have a very serious plumbing, but at the end of the day, there's one valve. Forget about the plumbing. There's one valve which controls the outcome of the uh, process. Uh, since 2004, 2003, 2004, the emergence of El Ghad and then Kifaya movements, the judges' movement, we saw a new level of uh, activism in Egypt, uh, thousands, I think, in one count, I think 5,000 uh, social unrest since uh, 2005. Uh, the young people started using the media like Facebook, the blogging, uh, and we saw the Facebook revolution in April 2008, uh, which a uh, uh, few young people uh, organized and successfully organized uh, a kind of a civil disobedience for one day. People just uh, were in general strike. With uh, these thousands of social unrests, we saw also in 2009 the uh, emergence of Barada, who was technically and realistically pushed by the young people to announce an interest in running if the uh, uh, political situation became more uh, fair uh, and uh, uh, the way he asked for some uh, amendments to the Constitution in order to allow independence to run. Uh, 2009 also saw the emergence of the MDT with Masr al or uh, Egypt Movement Against uh, Power uh, Inheritance, which when uh, Baradei came in 2010, uh, uh, became or was transformed into the National Association for change. These are just some pictures of the thousands of unrests. With the growing activism, on the other side of the growing activism, we saw a shrinking political space. So uh, whatever gains happened in 2004, 2005, the regime got its act together and figured out uh, ways to kind of crack down on this uh, uh, political space which was uh, captured by uh, the opposition. So in 2006, it saw crashing of the judges' movement, uh, and uh, since 2005, there was systematic uh, elimination of the new opposition. So the Red Party uh, was uh, 
denied existence really since 2005 and was torched. The headquarters of, of, of the party was torched in 2008. Um, the um, other uh, movements, the other political movements also like uh, members of these movements were systematically uh, arrested and uh, detained. Some of them compromised. Also, we saw playing of the Muslim Brothers, Hamas, and now Iran card to try to pacify the international community into thinking that it's uh, either us or them, us being the NDP, them being you know, the evil, whatever threat, Muslim Brothers, extremism, whatever it is, while in the meantime, the uh, regime systematically tries to crush any uh, alternatives in the middle, any middle ground, any liberals. Egypt, by nature, is maybe 75 to 80 percent of uh, Egyptians, if they were allowed to cast their vote, or if they were interested enough to cast their votes, they would probably vote for sort of liberal, leftist, uh, maybe 20 percent would vote for Islamists, but uh, since Islamists are the only forces allowed for existence, um, the, mostly, the uh, regime uses this argument, either us or them. So on one hand, the uh, orange line represents the rise of activism, which happens as most other things that happens in quantum leap. So 2005 saw some increases, 2008 saw some. When Braday came, again, there was some kind of a, a surge. And the blue line represents a political space which is just continuously being crushed. Uh, Michelle just mentioned the uh, acquisition of the Surah and the dismissal of Rahim Isa, just another example. Um, in October 2009, as I said, the uh, Campaign Against Power Inheritance was formed, had more or less the same ideas as uh, Kifaya, but uh, it was um, uh, more of moderates. Kifaya had like some trouble because it's some really extreme leftists there and uh, just uh, uh, was difficult to deal with in, in certain circumstances. So the, most of the, the, the people who were in Kifaya either left Kifaya and joined uh, the MDT or they stayed in Kifaya and also joined the MDT. In November 2009, Barade uh, stepped into the picture. 2010, February 2010, the NAC was formed, uh, issued a seven demand petition, started uh, to gather signatures on that petition. Um, the numbers, uh, hundreds, we're talking hundreds of thousands uh, who signed uh, with their national ID card, so it's a kind of verified signature uh, signatures on, on this petition. Of course, it was uh, difficult in the beginning. Uh, we, we were a member of, founding member of the uh, MDT and founding member also of the NAC. It was difficult to uh, overcome internal divisions. And, um, but I think at the end of the day, everybody realized that it's impossible to affect any real change without having strong alliance from the opposition. When I say the opposition here, I have to make a distinction between two types of opposition. One type, which is the formal or the official, the allowed uh, opposition, uh, and the other, which is the informal or the parallel or the uh, mahzur um, or, or banned opposition, such as the al uh, Party, such as the uh, Kifaya movement, such as 6th of April, and of course the Muslim Brothers. I will just quickly go over the um, participate versus boycott. Um, in, in, you know, I try to be as obje objective as possible, but I will have to warn you that we, I, I personally come from a, a, a group which now uh, uh, advocates boycotting the election. But basically the reasons for those who want to participate, they think that participation is the only positive uh, action possible, that uh, people are already boycotting. So 95% of the Egyptians, or maybe 90% of the Egyptians, don't participate in, 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 in voting anyway. So uh, uh, one would have assumed that we would tr should try to encourage people to vote rather than to boycott. Um, the boycotting, if, if one or two, part, two major parties decided to, to, to join the election, so boycotting would be meaningless. So that's one of the arguments against boycotting. The regime and the NDP will be very comfortable, and uh, uh, they don't really have to force the elections or, uh, or, or practice uh, or these irregularities. 
because they, there will be no uh, uh, opposition. So that's another argument. Um, of course, also the election is a, is a, is a great chance to uh, interact with the voters, to engage with the public, and uh, that's uh, uh, very valuable also in, 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 tra in training uh, the, the leaders and the youth uh, of uh, the parties in a political process. On the other hand, participation uh, with the regime denying the demands, you know, it's a set of demands to ensure that the election would be uh, fair and transparent, but all of these demands were uh, really rejected. So participation in, in, in a game without rules would be participation in a fraud. Uh, under the current constitution and from the practice we've seen, the parliament anyway is not really effective. Parliament does not really uh, legislate. It does not monitor the performance of the government. So the, gov the parliament really is, is just a part of the theatrical appearance. It doesn't have any, any, uh, any, any strong role to, to play. The, those who participated, like for instance the Muslim Brothers participated and they got, I would say, uh, they were allowed to participate by the regime in 2005 for, to achieve uh, some political games for the regime to scare, kind of scarecrow for the world. And they got 88 seats. What did they do? Almost 20% of the seats. What did they do with this 20% uh, uh, voting power in the parliament? They, they, nothing really. We didn't see, if anything, if we believe in the curve which I just described, if anything, we have seen a uh, uh, kind of decline in the uh, political space available. Um, the Shura Council, which is the Shura is the upper house in Egypt, the Shura Council, which is like in, in, in May, June last year, so ridiculous, I mean, creative, very creative results, because, for instance, in, in one of the, uh, one of the um, constituencies, we had, I think, the observers estimate about 7,000 voters, but one of the uh, regime puppets got 119,000 votes, miraculously. So th this, this kind of things, like, discourage people from participating. The legitimacy, I think, of the uh, legitimacy of the regime uh, would be uh, highly undermined by not by boycotting, and that's one of the arguments. Um, and of course, the course of action which the NEC advocates at this point is uh, civil disobedience, uh, possibly a parallel parliament uh, or a parallel uh, national legislative committee or something of that sort. Those who we caught will have to. Um, accommodate some of the members who, who will have to join. So, for instance, in Al-Ghad party, we allow some of our members who have a very strong case why they have to run for uh, uh, local reasons, that they can run as independents, but without uh, much of the support of the party. Um, the, also, the day after scenario, okay, what happens after, after the elections? The elections will happen, whether we uh, uh, participate or boycott. Um, also restoring the alliance, knowing that the Muslim Brothers was, was part of the NAC alliance and Muslim Brothers decided to, to participate. The Muslim Brothers itself has internally, many of the people in the Muslim Brothers, they, 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 they decided to boycott. So restoring the alliance and restoring the kind of uh, 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 consensus inside the opposition after the uh, elections. And uh, how can we translate this social activism into political institutions? And uh, we believe also that the opposition needs to present a strong case for a, for a, for a political project, uh, a kind of a vision. What, what, how can we affect change this, and, and try to uh, promote uh, that uh, to the people? For those who are participating, of course, uh, they are faced with the uh, old uh, problems, uh, vote buying, uh, people who join the parliament, uh, people spend on average maybe one to two million dollars in, in campaigns, although of course the law restricts the spending to maybe ten, tens of thousands of dollars, so, but the law is not enforced. So uh, vote buying is a very serious problem, and I mean here vote buying, actual vote buying, so on the, on the, on the voting day people like buy votes, but also um, gaining influence through bribing uh, those who have influence in, 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 in various constituencies, of course, excessive spending on um, 
advertising and promotional efforts. Uh, the corruption network which exists uh, make this a very profitable enterprise. So you spend uh, 10 million pounds or two couple of million dollars uh, promoting your campaign and you hope or you will realize you know, appropriation of land, having uh, various uh, economic interests achieved. So it's a kind of a, it's a kind of a, a, a an economic enterprise because uh, because of that, it's very difficult for somebody who does not plan to take advantage of these opportunities to justify the feasibility of, of putting that kind of money, uh, which is against the law also. Uh, of course, the uh, state security uh, intelligence also acts as a political party. Actually, I would say that SSI is the biggest political party in Egypt, but it, no, nobody, it's, it's not really a party, but it acts as a party. And of course, it, 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 it heavily influences the, uh, uh, the uh, political uh, happenings in Egypt. Um, um, and um, um, so that uh, resorting to rigging, resorting to uh, uh, falsifying the results comes as, as a last resort. So um, the biggest, second biggest of the SSI's second biggest party, of course, is the independence party. So in, for example, in 2000 elections, um, about 30, uh, the NDP got only about 38%, and then after the elections, the, those who won their seats as independents, they joined the NDP to get into the, the corruption network. There are many technical uh, uh, obstacles uh, uh, with the lists, the representatives who uh, monitor uh, the elections. Uh, I would be happy to uh, you know, talk about, I'm sure Mahmoud also will, will mention many of these. Um, I will conclude with uh, a few final notes. I think overemphasis on election technicalities and the lack of uh, political process may be counterproductive. In, in other words, if we have the best elections ever and we don't have political parties, we don't have free media, we don't have institution, you know, you could have fantastic uh, elections technically, but at the end of the day, it does not produce results which are, uh, represent really the will of the voters. Um, we have to also understand the sophisticated nature of the power monopoly. It's not now, it's not about election fraud anymore. It's about manipulating the political process so that it, it is scripted, it produces certain results. So it's, it's, it has become very, very sophisticated. Uh, even, some, in, even often using uh, opposition parties themselves or, or people who, who, who are thought of as opposition parties. Uh, it's very important here, I think, to, to build some leverage, to collect the cards, which whatever cards the U.S. administration has in Egypt and, and maybe introduce a more innovative package of, of um, uh, I would say, um, incentives of, for, for, for partnership and then try to get the Egyptian government or the, the Egyptian regime into introducing reforms using, I would say, positive rather than negative incentives. Um, the, that kind of, the, uh, you know, we have, ex we have felt that there is a kind of a rebound after Bush that the Obama administration has not yet formulated any, uh, any viable strategy for, for, that, uh, for that issue. I think one needs to be formulated immediately, and I think it needs to transcend um, administration. So it need, we need to take a, like a longer term approach. Nothing will happen within the next, you know, one month or 12 months, which will end the problem, which will cure the problem. You need to take a longer term approach. And we have to be confident that there are uh, alternatives in Egypt. It's just that these alternatives, the system right now does not, it is designed not to allow these uh, alternatives to uh, emerge. Um, the idea that uh, uh, we, sh you know, the U.S. administration should support this regime indefinitely because of other uh, uh, security and you know peace process issues. I think it's unsustainable. I think we should uh, seek to uh, uh, try to get a, a sustainable uh, situation because otherwise we'll end up uh, with uh, uh, negative results. Uh, I think I'll end up here. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> Thank very, you very much. much. Well, uh, very interesting. Okay, so now we'll we'll turn to the issue of uh, election monitoring, and I'll turn it over to you, Mahmoud. شكرا لك سيدتي العزيزه على هذه الدعوه الكريمه 
السيدات والسادة Thank you, thank you so much, very much for your words and ladies and gentlemen يسعدني أن أكون موجودا بينكم اليوم لكي نتحدث عن عملية مراقبة الانتخابات في مصر I'm delighted to be today among you to speak about monitoring the elections in Egypt وهي رسالة واضحة تؤكد أن حقوق الإنسان وقضايا الديمقراطية لم تعد شأنا محليا فقط بل باتت شأنا دوليا And, uh, and here I can say this is an, a very clear uh, uh, message that uh, when we talk about uh, the, the, uh, the goals of democracy, it's not only a local issue, but it is an international issue. وأن الأخطاء التي ربما قد تحدث في منطقتنا في الشرق الأوسط فيما يتعلق بتجاوزات وانتهاكات حقوق الإنسان وإعاقة التطور الديمقراطي. And when we talk about the mistakes being committed and violations being committed in, in our neighborhood in the Middle East in regard to uh, uh, human rights. يمكن أن تدفعوا ثمنها هنا في أمريكا وقد حدث بالفعل أن دفعتوا الثمن في أحداث 11 سبتمبر. The price could be paid uh, uh, even here and we, we saw what happened on 9-11. على أي حال أستعير من الزميل والصديق العزيز الأستاذ وائل التعبير الذي تناول به التعبير الذي تناول به توصيفه للحياة السياسية في مصر وأنها مسرح كبير. And, and here I would like to borrow from my dear uh, colleague Wael uh, his uh, expression when he uh, uh, talked about the political life in Egypt. It is like a, uh, a stage. وفوق الأمر ومنذ أن سيطر العسكريون على الحكم في مصر في عام 1952 لم يعد لدينا مشهد سياسي كالذي تعرفونه في بلدانكم الديمقراطية. And to be honest with you, since uh, the, uh, our military controlled the political uh, stage in Egypt in 1952, we cannot in any way compare it to what you know about a political uh, arena uh, here in your country. نحن لدينا مسرح يتحكم فيه فرد واحد هو الذي يرفع الستاره ويغلق الستاره هو الذي ينتج وهو الذي يخرج العمل المسرحي هو الذي يمثله أيضا. So when we look at the Egyptian political theater, there is only one director and there is only one person who controls the opening and closing of the curtain. And, and uh, the, the best uh, uh, endeavor on his side will be just maybe delegating some of the powers to uh, his uh, sons or relatives. أنا أصغر من الصديق العزيز وائل رغم أنه قد يبدو أن شعري أبيض لدي 43 عاما وشاهدت أكثر من خمس رؤساء أمريكيين. And uh, don't look at my white hair. I'm, I'm, I'm younger than Wael. I'm only 43 years old. And I witnessed the... That's debatable. <laughs> And, and I witnessed the uh, five American presidents. So what, uh, what I mean by that, that I, I consider myself a member of this generation, uh, 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 Mubarak's generation, as, as a president of Egypt. And I would like to thank God that I studied at college, I graduated, I worked, I got married, and I have a son, and still uh, Mubarak is the president. على أي حال الانتخابات البرلمانية القادمة تشكل نقطة فاصلة في تاريخ الحياة السياسية المصرية. So I would like to say that the parliamentary elections of 2010 is considered to be a tipping point when we talk about the political Egyptian path. لأنها أصبحت المدخل الطبيعي إلى خوض الانتخابات الرئاسية بعد التعديلات الدستورية التي أجريت مؤخرا ووضعت قيودا عديدا على حق المرشحين وممثلي الأحزاب في الترشح للانتخابات الرئاسية. And it, it became the, the natural uh, uh, path uh, uh, for, the, for the next uh, phase and uh, uh, especially in the, in the, in, in, in the, uh, in the light of uh, the constitutional amendments we, uh, which took place lately and which uh, 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 imposed uh, many restrictions 
on the right of um, uh, candidates to run for uh, this post of president. تأتي الانتخابات البرلمانية القادمة وكأن شيئا لا يحدث ولا يتغير في مصر على الإطلاق. Uh, the, the, the elections actually come and it may seem that there is nothing is changing. فما زال هناك غياب للإشراف القضائي على الانتخابات وما By that I mean the absence of uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, judges' rule in monitoring the elections. حملات اعتقالات مستمرة ومتصاعدة ضد أنصار جماعة الإخوان المسلمين وشباب حزب الجبهة. And uh, continuous uh, detentions uh, against uh, the loyalties of the uh, Muslim Brotherhood and 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 the Jabha uh, Shababia or the uh, the Youth Front. تنامي ظاهرة الاحتجاجات العمالية. And also the increase of uh, the uh, uh, workers' uh, uh, demonstrations. وارتفاع أسعار السلع والخدمات. وزيادة حدة التوتر الطائفي بين المسلمين والأقباط. And also uh, not to mention the increase of uh, the uh, food prices, the different services, and also uh, we witnessing the phenomena of uh, um, the sectarian tension. وزيادة أعداء الفقراء في ظل غياب التوزيع العادل للثروة في مصر. And the increase of uh, the dilemma of poverty uh, in the absence of a fair uh, distribution to the wealth among the citizens in Egypt. إذا نحن نفهم في منطقتنا أو في بلادنا الانتخابات بشكل مختلف ونطبقها بشكل مختلف. So when it comes to elections back in our region, we understand it in a different way and we implement it in a different way. الانتخابات في العالم كما نعرفها جميعا وفي الدول الديمقراطية هي تعبير عن التمثيل التعددي للقوى السياسيه والمجتمعيه and, and, I mean, uh, uh, وهي الوسيله الطبيعيه للتداول السلمي للسلطه And also, this is the, nat- the natural uh, uh, path to rotate power. وفي مصر الانتخابات باختصار لا تعبر إطلاقا عن إرادة الناخبين ولكنها تعبر عن إرادة من يجريها. But uh, to be, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the the elections uh, briefly in Egypt is not expressing the will of the people, but of the uh, the will who, uh, of who uh, the, the the person is running. من هنا يأتي الدور الهام لمراقبة من هنا يأتي الدور الهام الذي يمكن أن تلعبه منظمات المجتمع المدني فيما يسمى بعملية مراقبة الانتخابات. And here comes the importance of uh, the uh, the mission of the civil society organizations when it comes to monitoring. وهي عملية ليس جديدة على المجتمع المصري المسألة مراقبة الانتخابات عرفتها مصر عام 1995 على يد دكتور سعيد النجار ودكتور سعد الدين إبراهيم. And when it comes to monitoring uh, elections, actually, this is not something new in Egypt. Uh, we witnessed that back in 1995, uh, sp- uh, spearheaded by Dr. Saeed Najjar uh, and Dr. Ibrahim Saad al-Din Ibrahim. And from this time, the government of the community in Egypt ومنذ هذه تلك الفترة تبذل منظمات المجتمع المصري جهودا كبيرا من أجل الضغط على الدولة لإقرار فكرة مراقبة الانتخابات. And, and since that period, back in 1995, and the, uh, the civil society organizations are exerting um, a major uh, pressure on the, uh, on the government uh, uh, in terms of monitoring the elections. وعلى الرغم أن عملية الانتخابات بدأت مراقبة الانتخابات بدأت تأخذ منحنى جيد منذ انتخابات 2005. And I must say here that since uh, the elections in 2005, we, we saw a positive turning. ده من حيث الشكل مش من حيث التطبيق يعني. But uh, this is uh, let's say from the outside but not in terms of implementation. لأنه رغم أن اللجنة العليا المشرفة على الانتخابات قبلت وأقرت حق المنظمات في مراقبة الانتخابات. Because uh, though or yet the uh, higher committee uh, for uh, the elections agreed on the right of the civil society organizations to monitor uh, the elections. ولكن تطبيق هذا الأمر على أرض الواقع مرهون بموقف ورغبة الأجهزة الأمنية والإدارية. 
but in the in, in the ground uh, we see that this is a, uh, this uh, uh, agreement uh, is related to the desire of the uh, security uh, agencies. ومدى تعاون اللجنة العليا في إصدار بطاقات تسمح للمراقبين بدخول الانتخابات. And uh, well, and how far? Uh, the, the higher committee will be cooperative in issuing uh, 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 voting uh, or, let's say, monitoring cards for those who would like to monitor the elections. And here I would mention a number that uh, uh, the, the number would not exceed 10%. Um, in, in terms of the number of the people who would be approved to, um, to work as monitors in the different uh, polls. وفي واقع الامر هذا يدفعنا كمنظمات مجتمع المدني الى مطالبه الحكومه المصريه بتعديل قانون مباشره الحقوق السياسيه. And uh, this actually is also encouraging us to uh, call on the, uh, the Egyptian government uh, to amend uh, the codes in regard to the political rights. لينص بصراحه وبوضوح شديد على حق المراقبين في دخول اللجان ومتابعه اعمال التصويت والفرز. So so in, in order to um, the, the, this code will be very clearly amended to give the right to the monitors to enter the different polls and to uh, monitor and observe uh, the voting process. المسألة الثانية التي أود أن أتحدث عنها بإيجاز أيضا سريع. And the second point I would like to talk to you about uh, in brief. هي التحديات والاشكاليات التي تواجه منظمات المجتمع المدني ومراقبيها على ارض الواقع فيما يتعلق بقدرتها على مراقبه الانتخابات. And, uh, and here are the what are the challenges and problems we face as civil society organizations who uh, would like to monitor and also the members who are monitoring the elections. اول هذه التحديات هو عدم توافر المعلومات الخاصه بالعمليه الانتخابيه لا دل... لا للراي العام ولا منظمات المجتمع المدني ولا للمرشحين ولا للاحزاب السياسيه excuse me the first challenge is the lack of information uh, the data which is necessary when you talk about uh, an elections when it comes to who, uh, the uh, information data related to um, uh, to the uh, i mean which is important to the public uh, opinion and also uh, 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 information uh, related to, to the uh, to the candidates and so far حتى هذه اللحظه التي نتحدث فيها ليست لدينا اي معلومات وليست لدى احد في مصر اي معلومات and uh, so at this, until this moment, we don't have all uh, this uh, information again about the uh, candidates and the political parties and all the stakeholders of uh, the election. عن المواعيد المتعلقة بالعملية الانتخابية يوم التصويت. So what are the time frame for elections and what is the day, or day of voting? تسجيل المرشحين. Uh, what about uh, registering the candidates? الطعون الانتخابية. Uh, what about electoral challenges? بدء ونهاية الحملات. When uh, the ele electoral campaigns should start and when should they end? عدد مراكز الاقتراع. How many uh, polls or uh, poll stations we talk about? عناوين مقرات الاقتراع. The addresses of all these stations. نحن نفهم فقط أن الانتخابات يوم 29 نوفمبر. All what we know and understand is that we will have elections on November 29. وعلينا أن نجتهد جميعا. <laughs> have to, to strive and to be المسألة الثانية هي عدم تعاون اللجنة العليا للانتخابات مع منظمات المجتمع المدني. Second challenge we face the, the lack of cooperation between uh, the higher uh, electoral commission uh, with the uh, uh, civil society organizations. رغم أن هناك قرار وهو القرار رقم 7 لسنة 2007 قرار رقم 4 لسنة 2007 and though we have a decision, we call it decision four, uh, uh, for 2007. والذي يلزم العليا للانتخابات بأن تتعاون معنا كمنظمات مجتمع المدني في عملية المراقبة. 
which, according to this decision, the higher uh, electoral commission should cooperate with us as civil society organization when it comes to monitoring elections and to provide us with the necessary uh, permits uh, which will allow us to do our work. لا منظمات المجتمع المدني ولا الأحزاب لديها عناوين اللجنة العليا للانتخابات أو الأمانة العامة الخاصة بها. But I would like to say again, until this moment, neither the uh, the, uh, the the political parties or even the uh, civil society organizations have the addresses of the higher commission uh, locations. ولا نعرف من نخاطب وكيف. And we don't know who actually to get in touch with or how to approach them. Well, even if we got this information just few days before the election day, تبقى لتجاربنا مع اللجنة العليا في خلال الانتخابات الأربعة الماضية. But I would like to say, and based on our previous experience and the previous elections, uh, when it comes to our, uh, the work with the higher commission, هناك مشكلتين رئيسيتين. There are two major problems. المشكلة الأولانية هي أننا نتقدم بعداد لطلب تصريح وعلى سبيل المثال أربعة آلاف تصريح لأربعة آلاف مراقب. So I will give you an example. We would uh, approach the higher commission to receive uh, permits for about 4,000 monitors. هؤلاء هؤلاء المراقبين موزعين على ألف كيلو متر في حوالي تسعة وعشرين محافظة الآن. Who are spread it? Who should be spread it in about an area of thousand square kilometer or about twenty nine محافظة governors? ماذا يحدث ليلة الانتخابات؟ so what's going to happen at the, uh, on the night of elections? تمنحنا اللجنة العليا على سبيل المثال 200 بطاقة أو 300 بطاقة على الأكثر. The uh, the higher commission will uh, grant us just between two, 200 to 300 permits. وعادة ما تكون بطاقات للمراقبين في أسوان وفي مرسى مطروح وفي البحر الأحمر أي المحافظات البعيدة وهذا يفترض من اللجنة أن يكون لدينا كمنظمات مجتمع مدني أجهزة أو وسائل طيران أو عدة طائرات لتوزيع هذه التصريح في حوالي 12 ساعة قبل فتح باب اللجان. And 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 we we witness that the the permits usually are being uh, I mean you give us the permits to uh, monitor stations are considered to be in rural areas like in Marsa Matruh, far away areas where we are supposed to have also kind of a transportation, especially uh, air, airplanes, for example, to reach uh, the, these uh, regions at least 12 hours uh, prior to uh, uh, the opening of the. Um, the polls. نحن لدينا خلافات مع هذه اللجنة. So we have our differences. ورفضنا في with our relationship with the with the higher commission. ورفضنا في كل الانتخابات الماضية أن نستلم تصريح المراقبة. And in the previous elections, we decided not to accept permits from the higher commission. وأدنا في بيانات واضحة هذا التلاعب وهذا التحايل من قبل اللجنة على القانون. And also, we stated very loudly the evasiveness of uh, the committee by doing this when it comes to the, elect uh, the code. الإشكالية الثالثة والهامة وهي الإشكالية المتعلقة بكشوف الناخبين. And then a third problem, and which is considered to be very serious problems when it comes to uh, the voter registry. أما إحنا ما نعرفش الحد دلوقتي كشوف الناخبين اللي يتم على أساس إجراء انتخابات 2010. We don't know where. Um, I mean, what, what are they? Where are they? Uh, where, uh, in terms of the who's gonna uh, vote in the 2010 elections? وحتى على سبيل المثال لو تسلمنا نحن أو مرشحين المعارضة هذه الكشوف. And even let's assume that uh, we or anybody from the opposition will receive uh, uh, these kind of registries. ليس لها معنى وليس لها قيمة لأنها لا تحتوي على عناوين أو وسائل اتصال بالناخبين. It has no value whatsoever because the, in these registries you will see there are no address or any way to contact uh, the, those uh, individuals. وتخيلوا على سبيل المثال أن يكون في الكشف الانتخابي لديكم هنا. And let's assume together that you here in the United States, we, when you look at a, a, vo a voter registry, السيد ستيف مايكل شارع إم واشنطن دي سي. 
uh, to have uh, Mr. Uh, Steve Michael uh, located at M Street in Washington DC. مطلوب مني كمرشح وكحزب معارضة أن أبحث عن سيد ستيف في شارع M بواشنطن دي سي لكي أرسل إليه برنامج الانتخابي أو أطلب منه أن يحضر للمشاركة في التصويت. So as if I am the uh, if I'm uh, run for office uh, uh, on behalf of an opposition party, I would like, uh, of course, I have to contact Mr. Steve and to uh, uh, us in order to give him my uh, uh, platform. المشكلة الثانية لدينا حوالي خمسين لجنة خاصة بالتصويت أو مركز اقتراع أو مركز تصويت. The other خمسين ألف. Uh, the other part of the problem is that we have about 50,000 polls or, or polling stations. يتم اختيار رؤساء هذه اللجان من الموظفين الحكوميين وأغلبهم أعضاء ينتمون إلى عضوية الحزب الوطني الحاكم. And actually, they are uh, supervised by committees, and the uh, and the head of the uh, committees are member of the uh, ruling party, the NDP. المشكلة الرابعة أن عمليات تسجيل المرشحين تتم في مدريات الأمن أي في المراكز الرئيسية القوى الشرطة أو للأجهزة الأمنية. And then the fourth problem is that the um, registering of the candidates be, it's being conducted what? in the security directorates ولا يستطيع, or police stations. ولا يستطيع مراقبون أن يراقبوها بدقة لأنه أحيانا قد يمنعوا من قبل الأمن والشرطيين من دخول هذه المدريات أو مراكز التسجيل. So, uh, so the, uh, uh, the monitors may face a problem that they the, uh, the security uh, uh, forces will not allow them to enter uh, the police stations or, uh, in order to, to, uh, to monitor what's going on registering. Also, a uh, fifth problem is that some of the monitors in some of the uh, electoral districts being uh, uh, exposed to assault uh, by the uh, security forces. And they, uh, they, whatever they have uh, of equipments or tools to do the monitoring will be confiscated. صحيح بنتدخل وبيفرجوا عنهم لكن طبعا بعد انتهاء التصويت وإغلاق مراكز الاقتراع. And of course, we immediately try to intervene and to release them if they've been jailed, but they will not be released until, of course, the whole process is being done. القضية السابعة والإشكالية أو التحدي السابع هي منع المراقبين من دخول مراكز الاقتراع ومتابعة ما يحدث داخلها. And then the seventh challenge in front of the monitors being also um, not, uh, they, uh, they are prohibited sometimes to enter the polling stations and to monitor the electoral process. And so how, so how at the end of the day we will be asked and we can say that what's going on inside the polling stations is, is, do, is being conducted according to the uh, international uh, standards when it comes to monitoring because we're not allowed even to enter it. Yeah. And also we as monitors are being prohibited to witness uh, the process of casting. I'm sorry. وهي مرحلة خطيرة يتم التلاعب فيها فيما يتعلق بعمليات التصويت. And this is a very, very uh, serious uh, phase when we talk about uh, electoral, electoral process and we witness a lot of uh, evasiveness. الإشكالية التاسعة وهي عدم وجود تطبيق قواعد قانون عدم عدم وجود تطبيق عقوبات قانونية على المخالفات المتعلقة بالقواعد المنظمة للعملية الانتخابية. And then the ninth challenge that we don't have a panel uh, uh, code sanctions uh, against uh, or, uh, against any irre irregularities being committed um, uh, in terms of elections. الإشكالية الأخيرة اختصارا للوقت وهي تعازم دور رأس المال وتعازم أعمال العنف كما حدث في انتخابات 2005. And then. Um, Lastly, the tenth challenge maybe is the increase, the increased role of money and violence. And this is uh, what we witnessed, uh, if we uh, remember what uh, elections of 2005. And 
and the, um, uh, the importance of this phenomena, again, I say the, the, uh, the violence is that that, uh, of course, is a major uh, obstacle in front of the monitors, uh, monitors to, to do their job by monitoring the elections. And on the other hand, also, it's an obstacle in front of the voters themselves to go and vote. <laughs> I, would li I don't want to sound like an uh, pessimistic. Uh, but I am uh, one of those who ask uh, for the to, to participate. And so by this, uh, I have a different opinion uh, to my friend Wael. You live in a free country. And, and this is also our right as Egyptians to live in a free homeland or a free country. Thank you very much. And, um, and thank you very much uh, for the translation uh, as well, Matas. Okay, I'll, we'll turn now to Andrew Albertson for a very brief and sagacious comment. Uh, you have 30 seconds, Andrew. <laughs> uh, let me just start by saying uh, uh, thank you to Carnegie and, and to Michelle in particular. Um, over the last few years, as POMED has gotten off the ground, we um, have benefited a tremendous amount um, from the, um, some support and advice from some of the scholars at Carnegie. Michelle, um, chief among them, has been uh, incredibly generous with her time. And so we're appreciative to her, and we're um, very pleased to be uh, partnering on this series of five events, uh, starting with this one on, on Focus on Egypt. So I'm pleased to be here. And thank you, Weil and Mahmoud, for your remarks. We couldn't have had two better speakers to walk us through both, you know, what are some of these elements that are important to uh, free and fair elections in Egypt? Um, what's the broader context uh, of folks that are thinking about participating in, in elections? What does that mean for broader issues of democracy and governance? I just want to make three quick points. I'll try to make them quicker than I had planned, um, or more, uh, more quickly. Um, first, you know, it is interesting to talk about the Egyptian elections in a broader context uh, of elections in the Arab world. We have uh, elections also coming up in Bahrain, in Jordan. Um, and there are, you know, it's sort of a moment where you can take some comparative lessons or, or some or some broader trend lines. Um, certainly there are more elections than there were a couple decades ago. There, it's, it's more or less a part of the terrain. Um, it's part of, I think, it's an accepted element um, that in some way government and a legitimate government is tied with having elections. Now, there's a lot of wiggle room there in terms of the quality of those elections that have to have, um, the elements that have to make those up, um, and we're talking about some of those. And I think you're seeing two different things, two different trend lines. Um, one is an evolving set uh, of expectations about what kind of elections are, are needed to generate legitimacy, and, and maybe I'll come back to that point. On the other hand, you're also seeing an evolving set of repressive mechanisms designed specifically to clamp down, not just on election day, as, as Wael pointed out, um, but during the immediate period right before an election, um, to clamp down on freedom of association, freedom of speech, of the press, uh, of access to information, you know, right in that period before elections in, in, in an effort to make sure that, you know, one party, one, the government wins. Now, when we're talking about the evolving norms, um, there's a lot of things that go into that. Um, and uh, I think it's, uh, it's great to have organizations like the Egyptian Association for Supported Democracies that is hard at work trying to translate international norms into an Egyptian context and ask the same set of questions that people are asking in monitoring elections around the world. Um, uh, also, this question of international monitors, which is debated uh, a lot, it's very interesting. You know, if you look in the region, Lebanon has had several sets of you know international monitors um, working together with domestic monitors in Iraq. In the parliamentary elections, we had uh, uh, several different international monitoring groups, including the Arab League, which I understand did a tremendous job. Um, NDI and IRI will be working in, in, in Jordan, sending monitors to Jordan. Um, I think this is next month, um, which is a first, and that's exciting. In the Palestinian territories, we've had monitors, even in Sudan. Um, you know, we, we just had election monitors go. So uh, in Egypt, it's no surprise that Egyptians are, are seeing international monitors as sort of an important guarantee to elections that work, that are serious, that mean something, or are transparent. Um, uh, World Public Opinion uh, did the polls, a couple of polls last year, and I was happy to see Steve Cole is here, um, that showed that nearly two-thirds of Egyptians have said 
um, that you know countries should allow international monitors, um, and that Egypt itself would benefit from having international monitors. And of course, nearly a million Egyptians have now signed a petition, one point of which calls for uh, free access for both domestic and international monitors. This petition started by Mohamed al-Baradi. Um, so elections are important, and, and I think it's important, as uh, Mahmoud pointed out, it's an international issue. We have international standards here. And just like human rights monitors, their work is inherently linked up, you know, tracking what's happening on the ground and getting that information out. International, you know, election monitoring is also inherently connected uh, a, a domestic audience and, and other audiences, including international audiences, that are paying attention to the results of that and asking, um, hopefully publicly, questions about what that means for the legitimacy of a government um, and for all of us. Um, the second point I want to make, um, you know, we really need to crush this myth about uh, Egyptians' non-participation. Um, I was, I actually, um, probably not supposed to say this, but just between you and you guys and me, uh, I, I spoke with an American diplomat in Cairo recently, and I was really upset to hear him say, you know, ah, you know, people don't participate in elections here anyways. You know, and I, I probably don't have to go through the reasons why I find that offensive or disturbing. Um, but let's, you know, let, let's take a second to think about, you're an Egyptian, you're thinking about voting, you're thinking about participating in this election, not going to a protest, not monitoring the votes, not getting together an effort to watch what's happening, but just to vote. You know, um, you're having a hard time because parties aren't very responsive to you because new parties can't start, they can't register. You're deluged by state-run media most of the year. Um, when elections approach, you know, your favorite talk show hosts get fired, satellite channels close. You can't even get text message alerts from news stations, you know, news alerts. If you wanted to vote, well, you had to go to the police station um, to get your, your voting card. We, and that's not exactly a, you know, a pleasant, exciting experience. You know, it's not a fun thing to do on a Saturday. Um, uh, when you go to vote, you know, they may or may not have a voting card for you. you know. When you go to vote, um, you're highly unlikely to have any independent monitors there to monitor, you know, see any of the process. Uh, you may see police outside the station. You may see other people who are not readily identified as, as security, um, which, you know, are not excited about you going and voting. Okay. Um, um, it, if you're facing that situation, it doesn't make that much sense for you to invest the time and effort to go and participate, does it? Um, and, and here's the point. People are smart. If the institutions work, if they're serious, if you're voting for an institution that actually relates public policy to your goals, if the, if the voting process is transparent and meaningful, you're going to go out and participate. And if it's not, you're probably not. And so you certainly sympathize with um, the perspective of those who are thinking about you know, boycotting the elections from a party standpoint. I also have sympathize with those who are wanting to go out and participate precisely, and this is what the Muslim Brotherhood and some of the other groups that are participating are doing. They're going out and participating precisely to show the flaws in the system, to register them, to write them down, to tell all of us what's going on and in the hope that international standards move forward and push for pro progress. Um, I have another point. I could raise it later, but anyways. <laughs> That's you. a great place to end, Andrew. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so, uh, I, boy, I, I, have some, uh, I have some burning questions, but I'm going to hold them back because I know all of you do too, and I want to I leave time for that, and I want to get you out of here on time. So here are the ground rules. Uh, put your hand up if you want to ask a question. At, when I recognize you, wait for one of the microphones to come to you. Uh, please tell us who you are and your organization. Please keep your question brief. No statements or speeches, please. Just a brief question, and if you want to direct it to a specific person on the panel, do that. I think I'll go ahead and collect a few questions to start with, and then we'll go forward. This gentleman right here in the red. Uh, Mohammed Wafa from Middle East Broadcast Network. Thank you. Uh, Wael, Mahmoud, and Andrew for the uh, picture about the Egyptian elections, although the picture had given by Wael and Mahmoud is very bleak. Uh, I will ask about the international monitors, and the question is for Mahmoud. Did you ever seek international monitors? 
Do you speak with any of the international monitors? Do you think the international monitoring for the election would make any change in the process? Thank you very much. Amin Mahmoud, Alliance of Egyptian American. I would like to ask uh, Wael and uh, Mahmoud uh, why to participate in the election. Participating is positive, but in this situation, boycott is the positive thing to do, and the shame on the Waft Party and Muslim Brotherhood to participate. Is that and a Amin, is that yes, a question? Yes, I would like their <laughs> comment on that. Okay, thank no, you. I mean, thank you. We, we, yeah, we're not going to have comments because we have very little time, but thank you. We will ask your question about why, why participate. Uh, right behind him, Michael. Thank you. Michael Allen with the National Endowment for Democracy. Mr. Nawara said that the, um, the Bush administration didn't have, I think you said, a viable political strategy to, uh, to deal with Egypt as part of what you call the rebound against the, the Bush administration's freedom agenda. I wonder if you could uh, suggest one single thing that the administration should be saying or doing, either publicly or privately. Thank you. Uh, yeah, right, right behind him. Thank you. And then, the, then we'll let them answer a couple of these. Yes, uh, Greg Aftandili, an independent consultant. Uh, my question is for Mr. Mahmoud Ali Mohammed. Um, during the 2005 parliamentary elections, some of the mon domestic monitors were allowed into the vo voting stations, but the problem um, was that many of them, of course, were not allowed into the counting stations. And uh, I was wondering if um, you could address that topic and uh, what have you been doing vis-a-vis -vis the higher committee on the, the, that issue? Thank you. Okay, let's answer these questions, then we'll come back for some more. Um, a, a co several of these questions are directed to you, Mahmoud, and actually, I, I want to add one. Could you just give us a couple of numbers briefly? How many election observers are needed, domestic Egyptian election observers, to cover 50,000 polling stations plus the counting stations? How many are being trained and have you had any indications about how many the Electoral Commission is prepared to credential? Okay, so if you could just give us some of those numbers in addition to answering the other questions that were directed to you, and then well, we'll, we'll turn to you. فيما يتعلق بالسؤال الخاص بمسألة الرقابة الدولية على المستوى الشخصي وأنا أرحب بمسألة الرقابة الدولية في مصر. The national monitoring, my, my personal view on this is that I welcome uh, international monitoring to elections in, or to monitor elections in Egypt. أنا كنت أحد المسؤولين عن فريق المراقبة العربية في انتخابات الرئاسية الموريتانية. Uh, I was actually one uh, on the uh, Arab uh, team in uh, observe, observing the elections in, in, Mauritania. in, in Mauritania. كان هناك مراقبون من الاتحاد الافريقي ومن جامعة الدول العربية ومن المنظمة الفرنكوفونية. And there were other monitors at this election from AU and from the Arab League as well. أنا شاركت في الانتخابات السودانية بل ودربت مراقبين سودانيين على مراقبة وسائل الإعلام. And actually also I participated when it comes to monitoring the Sudanese uh, elections. I uh, trained uh, some of the uh, monitors uh, there how to deal with media. And also at, this, at the end of this month I will visit Bahrain uh, in part of a training program to train the monitors there. Uh, on the elections. في موريتانيا في البحرين في السودان الحساسية موجودة فقط في مصر. So uh, there is no kind of sensitivity here when it comes to I guess international monitoring whether it's in Bahrain or Sudan. The the, the, sens the sensitivity is in Egypt. هل يمكن أن تلعب الرقابة الدولية دورا هاما على الانتخابات القادمة في مصر يمكن نعم أن تلعب دورا هاما على الانتخابات القادمة في مصر في إطارين. Uh, uh, to uh, second question, can uh, the uh, the international monitoring play a major or a, a chief uh, role when it comes to the uh, uh, elections in Egypt? Uh, the an uh, the uh, short answer is yes. And how? I would say in two points. الإطار الأولاني أنهم يستطيعون أن يقدموا رؤية للعالم عن البيئة السياسية والانتخابية التي تجرى فيها العملية الانتخابية. 
that the, or the first frame will be that will give uh, the, uh, um, the, the world a, a vision or a picture about the, the political environment. The second uh, point is that we'll uh, give uh, a real support to the local or domestic monitors. المسألة الثالثة أنهم سيحدون وجودهم سيحد بشكل أو بآخر من عمليات التزوير الوساعة في مصر. And then thirdly, also their presence will avoid to uh, will avoid uh, uh, election fraud. القضية ما تزال مطروحة ولكنها غير محسومة من قبل الحكومة المصرية. And this which, which happened is, is still, um, uh, I mean, it's been looking into it, and it, 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 uh, there wasn't uh, um, a final uh, decision. The government is talking about having representatives from the different foreign uh, government's uh, missions or representatives from international uh, organizations or representatives to uh, foreign uh, media outlets that all, all these parties can monitor the elections ولكن دون رقابة يعني دون رصد أو توثيق لما يحدث في هذه العملية الانتخابية. But what about documenting what's going on during the elections? هذا هو الموقف الذي حدث في انتخابات 2005 كما تساءل البعض. And this is what happened in, in back in 2005, and I guess somebody asked me about this. لم يكن هناك مراقبين دوليين كان هناك ممثلين للـ NDI والـ RII والـ Freedom House. Uh, that uh, th th this uh, the 2005 we didn't have uh, uh, international monitors but we had representatives from organizations like NDI and RII and similar and also um, um, uh, employees uh, uh, of uh, foreign governments uh, embassies in Egypt سمح لهم بالتجول بين مراكز الاقتراع ولم يسمح لهم فعلا بحضور اعمال الفرز they were allowed just to walk into the polls, but not to monitor the casting process. So the government may doubt uh, our credibility uh, uh, in terms of monitoring the elections, uh, or also doubt the, uh, the, 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 uh, the foreign uh, players when it comes, I mean, like the, the staffers of the foreign embassies لكن, when it comes to monitoring the elections. لكن سيكون من الصعوبة بش, الصعوبة الشديدة جدا أن يتم التشكيك في مصداقية المراقبين الدوليين. But on the other hand, it will be very difficult for the government to doubt the uh, the work of the international monitor. لذلك لا تريدهم الحكومة المصرية شهداء على ما يحدث في الانتخابات القادمة. That's why the uh, Egyptian government uh, doesn't want to have the international monitors to witness what's going to happen during the next election. فيما يتعلق بأعمال المراقبة المحلية القادمة. When it comes to uh, 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 local monitoring during the next elections, we have uh, ten, uh, created ten alliances to cover this mission. من المتوقع أن يصل عدد المراقبين إلى اتناشر ألف مراقب. We expect to have about uh, uh, twelve plus. Uh, monitors. بما يكفي بما يكفي لمتابعة 20% من إجمالي مراكز الاقتراع. Which will uh, which uh, will cover about 20% of uh, the polling stations. هؤلاء المراقبين أو معظم هؤلاء المراقبين تلقوا تدريبات جيدة من بعض المؤسسات الدولية. Those monitors actually actually received good training from various international entities. على سبيل المثال في منظمتنا. I give you an example when it comes to my organization. نحن لدينا شراكة تمتد لست سنوات مع المعهد الديمقراطي. Uh, uh, we have a partnership. My organization, we have a partnership goes about six years now with the NDI. And they, they, they give us the full support in terms of to provide us with a technical uh, and, and, uh, and also the uh, technical support and equipments 
to uh, to do our job as monitors. هيئة المعونة الأمريكية تلعب دورا جيدا في تمويل الأنشطة الخاصة بالمراقبة داخل مصر. Also, uh, USAID is playing a, a vital role when it comes to uh, how to support local uh, monitors. وإن تبقى المشكلة الحقيقية هل سيسمح لهؤلاء المراقبين المدربين أن يساهموا بشكل فعال في عملية المراقبة أو لا؟ But the, 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 the whole issue here is whether or not uh, those monitors will be allowed, who are trained, trained monitors, will be allowed to uh, monitor the elections or not. فيما يتعلق بمسألة مقاطعة الانتخابات أو عدم مقاطعة الانتخابات. Uh, and, uh, and now I would like to, uh, 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 and now I would like to speak uh, or answer the question in regard to whether or not to participate uh, the elections. أنا أتفق مع الأستاذ أمين هناك أشياء مغجلة كثيرة تحدث في مصر. I agree uh, with the gentleman who asked the question. There are some shameful events uh, taking place in Egypt. لكن نحن نعيش في هذا الوطن. But we live in, in, in this homeland. So if we decided to prohibit, what is the alternative here? What, what, what shall we do? So and practically, whether you participate or you, or you boycott, um, I mean, I don't, I, I think I see it useless. ولكن يبقى المهم أن نكون موجودين في الشارع أن نكون متواصلين مع المواطنين أن نكون على الأقل قادرين على كشف أساليب التزوير وفتحها محليا ودوليا فيما يحدث في الانتخابات. But the important thing is to be present uh, on the streets and to to be uh, to to outreach our citizens. And to reveal the uh, methods being used during the elections uh, when it comes to uh, fraud, yeah, and and to, to and, and to show it, of course, to the whole world. Mr. Wael. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mahmoud. Well, you have the question about the Obama administration and uh, what you would suggest specifically yeah, so that they do. Yes. Uh, uh, three words: uh, understanding, uh, leverage, consistent uh, strategy. Uh, once you have the understanding, what Really, the obstacles, um, I would say, designing uh, 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 some leverage with positive incentives. I, I believe that the, the, the problem has always been uh, using leverage which doesn't exist. So, in, in other words, designing, thinking out of the box. I'm not talking here about funds uh, as much as I'm talking about things which Obama himself mentioned in his Cairo speech, things like partnership, uh, entrepreneurship, uh, promoting uh, access to markets, uh, qualified industrialists, whatever things that actually link the uh, mutual benefits, uh, interest of, of both countries and have a program of like sort of graduation. So you want to join this thing, you have to, it's like the Turkey model joining the EU. You want to uh, uh, be promoted to the next level, you have to do this to comply with the international standards for, for that kind of thing to provide this, uh, uh, long term stability because the situation right now is unsustainable. I want to make just one comment on what Andrew said about Egyptian not wanting to go to elections. We can take cue from uh, elections in the clubs or the syndicates where uh, often the will of the voters is translated actually to action. So we go in the clubs and we find anywhere between 60% to 85% participation in the elections. But when the Voters feel that their votes are used at, are, will go in vain. They, they will tend not to go, especially if they're also threatened with violence and so on. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have time for a couple more questions. This one here. Uh, my, name is, my name is Michael Gabriel. Uh, my question is for uh, Mr. Ranwara and Mr. Uh, Muhammad. Uh, I, I really sympathize with you about uh, the elections and the outcome, but my, uh, at the end of the day, most of uh, the members of the parliament are Muslims. And recently, the government, I believe, uh, uh, said something about quota for the women. So how about the same thing for the Coptic community in Egypt, please? Okay, thank you. Do we have another question here? Thank you. Drew Richards from ADST. Um, boycott or participate? I'm going to be in Cairo at the beginning of next month. What are some things I could see on the street that might show signs of imminent change? Okay. I think there's a question back there. 
Hi, uh, my name is Jason Stern. I'm a current student at George Washington University. I read an article today about the French ambassador for human rights visiting Egypt, and on his schedule, uh, the only thing he'd be talking about is anti-Semitism, not the countless human rights abuses such as arbitrary arrest, torture, etc. And the reason is because he didn't want to have unwanted internal interference into Egyptian affairs. So where do you draw the line from helpful international support versus unwanted external interference in local affairs? Thank you. Okay, I'm going to give um, each of the panelists, and Andrew too, if you would like it, just a minute to make a few uh, last remarks. And since nobody asked this question, I have to ask it, which is regarding the opposition groups, with some of them participating and some of them boycotting, are you or are you not canceling each other out in terms of um, exerting any effective pressure on the government for changes or reforms? Okay, so you can just answer that yes or no. You're canceling each other out or you don't think you're canceling each other out by, uh, by doing that. Okay, so we'll go uh, first to Mahmoud, then uh, Andrew, do you want to add a word on this? But please, please briefly, just, just a minute or so because we want to get these good people out on time. Uh, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Muslim Egyptian. Uh, liberal. Uh, I'm a Muslim uh, liberal Egyptian. I believe that this country is the country that 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 is and I believe that my homeland is open to everybody regardless to uh, uh, their uh, ideologies. And you know with me أن مصر الحقيقية كان من البساطة أن يكون فيها رئيس وزراء مسيحي. And, and, and you know that when we talk about real Egypt, real Egypt witness a Christian prime minister at one time. وكان فيها في أوقات رئيس وزراء رئيس مجلس نواب مسيحي. And also at one time we had the speaker of the parliament also Christian. الوحدة الوطنية قضية أنتجها المجتمع المصري وحافظ عليها منذ حوالي قرن. The, uh, when we talk about uh, the uh, national unity in Egypt, it, it is essential and it was uh, uh, cultivated uh, almost a uh, hundred years ago. And as we are speaking right now, I don't see that we and uh, that me or you, we have differences among each other. We have the same history, we have the same homeland, and we have the same history. And based on what I said right now, I refuse the idea of having a quota for Copts. Uh, uh, the uh, the military military personnel are the one who spoiled the uh, the uh, environment of uh, the national union uh, unity in Egypt. And when we will uh, witness a real democratic regime. بين كل المصريين فيما يتعلق بحقوقهم وواجباتهم. which adapt a citizenry as one of its standards when it comes to the rights of each citizen. سأصوت لك في الانتخابات بغض النظر عن كونك مايكل سأصوت للبرنامج الذي تطرحه أو أعارض البرنامج الذي تطرحه. I will vote uh, for you uh, if you decide to run, Michael. I will, I will vote for you or against you, but based on, uh, on your uh, uh, political uh, platform. Or and this is the homeland or the, uh, which uh, we as Christians and we as Muslims have to revive. المسألة الثالثة فيما يتعلق بالمساحة التدخل وعدم التدخل في الشؤون الداخلية. I would like now to talk about whether and how far we allow the intervention of foreign entities or foreign forces inside Egypt. أؤمن باستقلال وطني وبحقه فأن تكون إرادته حرة بعيدة عن أي ضغوط أجنبية أو خارجية. I believe in the independence uh, and the freedom of my country, and, and there's no uh, space here for exerting pressure on my country. And 
And this is, uh, I mean, this is a non-discussable uh, uh, decision. لكن كما قلت حينما نتحدث عن قضايا حقوق الإنسان حينما نتحدث عن قضايا نزاهة الانتخابات هذه لم تعد شأنا محليا هذه قواعد دولية وقعت عليها الدول الأعضاء في الأمم المتحدة وباتت جزء من القانون الداخلي الذي يجب أن تلتزم به كافة الحكومات الحكومات هنا في واشنطن في القاهرة في نيجيريا في المكسيك هذه لم تعد أمور لها علاقة بالشؤون الداخلية هذه قواعد لها علاقة بالقانون الدولي وبالمعايير الدولية. So, but when it comes to human rights and integrity of the elections, uh, this is not anymore a domestic issue. It's it's an international, it's a national issue based on uh, all the United Nations uh, state members who and, and uh, who are considered to be signatories to these uh, uh, rules. So. Uh, so now this, whether we are in DC, whether we are in Cairo, whether we are in Nigeria, whether we are in Mexico, we, uh, the, uh, when it comes to elections, it's not considered to be a local, or the rules of running elections not considered to be only local, but it is also international. And, and, and when it comes to anti-Semitism, I, I don't understand this cause anymore. هناك معاهدة سلام موجودة بين مصر وإسرائيل. We have a peace treaty between Egypt and Israel. الدول العربية جميعها تدعو إلى تطبيق القرار 242 صدر عن الأمم المتحدة. All Arab states are asking for the implementation of resolution 242. ببساطة شديدة ماذا يعني هو هذا القرار هو عودة إسرائيل إلى حدود ما قبل 5 يونيو 67. And basically, the core of this resolution is that Israel should go back to the borders of before June 5, 1967. The Arab-Israeli government has said and, and, and all Arab states again agreed on this uh, uh, resolution. So we agree uh, that on the existence of uh, of this uh, of this state. And uh, maybe the issue is here in regard to the borders. Uh, uh, Mahmoud, I, I want to give the others a chance. Okay, and we're we're already past time. Thank you. Uh, well, would you like to say a, a few words in response to the last questions? Yes, I, I actually sympathize with uh, with with your with your idea about having uh, uh, more representation for uh, Christians. Uh, actually, Copt is Egyptian, so I'm, you know, Muslim Copt. Uh, others are Muslim uh, Christian Copts. But um, ha having seen the, I actually went to Lebanon a number of times. Having seen the situation in Lebanon and how politics have become more of a sectarian quotation sort of thing. It's, it's, not, it's far from being demo, a, a healthy democracy. So I would say we would really look into how can we ensure uh, a pro proper representation in, 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 in public life also. Like uh, with the weakness of the Egyptian state, the parallel states appeared. And one of these parallel states was a church. One of the parallel states was the Muslim Brothers. A number of parallel states appeared. So I think the solution is, again, is, is, is a number of things. One, one of the things, for instance, is proportionate lists, election by proportionate lists. And then the parties should, uh, should, should work on this list and should ensure that there is proper representation of uh, uh, Christians, women, all other uh, uh, parts, parts of, the, of society. I, would, I wouldn't call Christians a, a minority as such in Egypt, although they, they are now treated uh, like a minority and acting like a minority. But at one point of time, they were not really a minority. At one point of time, they were really, a, they was a, you couldn't really dis, dis, differentiate, distinguish between the two. But now, yes, definitely, and now this is not the situation we want to see. Um, the important question, which is uh, Michelle is saying, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be optimistic here. I'm hoping that those who are, who are boycotting are joining the people. They are, the people are boycotting anyway. They have been boycotting since maybe, you know, uh, for many years. So the people are boycotting, and the, these movements are boycotting. They are joining the people. They are sending a message that this is illegitimate, that you cannot go on with this play forever. The people who are joining, I think, they are also are participating. They are also doing a, an important role. They are exposing. Without participating, you can't expose the fraud. You can't expose. So I think each are doing 
uh, their part. And the, 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 those who are participating, remember that uh, the, many of them also are in the formal opposition. So they cannot really not participate because this is, you know, this is the rules of the game. You want to be uh, an acknowledged party, you have to play the game. You want to uh, be banned and persecuted and, and, and torched, then you're, you're free to, to do that. But we, we don't need to torch everybody. You know, you know, some people can't be the martyrs, and we need also some, you know, a Luaft party. We need to see the Luaft party to continue to transcend this uh, uh, current uh, uh, slaughter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Andrew, just yeah. tie it up. One quick last point. Um, you know, I, th I think sometimes when we're talking, especially in this room with all of us, um, we're focused a lot on democracy and governance. Sometimes we miss the connection between what elections are and, and, and a broader set of issues. You know, and, and elections are really about accountability. Um, and, and and the moral you know issue at the crux of this is we're talking about a country that um, one more country, not the only one, one more country. You've seen a dramatic failure of governance over a, a several decade you know, period. Um, there. There is this authoritarian development theory, right? That there's, you need a strong hand, a strong state, pushing a country along um, in a very controlled way towards better and better outcomes. Uh, Turkey, uh, South Korea, Taiwan, uh, Singapore. E you know, Egypt is not one of those. Um, uh, in fact, most countries are not. Most countries with authoritarian closed systems, uh, they have those for political reasons, not for development reasons. Um, and, and so, you know, as it turns out, accountability matters, and that's what elections are about. Um, school districts, financial districts, also development, accountability matters. You're going to tend to have better outcomes. Um, that's what Egyptian people, you know, are, are wanting when they're wanting elections that work and they want to go out and, and vote and have a voice in uh, who represents them, and, and that's why we should all care about this. Um, so I think this is going to be one of those moments. Uh, right after the parliamentary elections, which from all of our comments, you know, we can sort of already expect are not going to be great. Um, how does the international community respond to that? It's one of those moments where we'll be paying attention so closely that even silence will make a huge message. So, you know, I think this cannot be a moment where we're sort of standing on the sidelines or, um, or, or, or making statements like, well, it's up to the people there and that sort of thing. This has to be one of those moments right after the parliamentary elections. Egypt is in a transition right now. So the principles of the democracy, of transparency, of accountability, what role are those supposed to play in a transition into the next government? This has to be a moment where we sort of stand up and say, this is what we care about. This is the values we feel strongly about. And this, is what we're gonna, this is what we can do to help you get there. Right, and I think part of the part of the confusion here is that the parliamentary elections are not going to. That is not itself the leadership transition, right? The the actual leadership transition is the transition in the presidency that's going to happen, either through an election next year or at some other time sooner than that, later than that. We don't really know, but I I, I do agree that what happens with the parliamentary elections and how the international community treats them has implications for how the presidential succession will uh, will unroll. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here, for your interest. Please join me in thanking our speakers, Wa'al, Mahmoud, Andrew, and thank you, Mwatez.